Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to be talking about Terminator Dark Fate. And, and, the, and they make no bones about it, they say quite publicly uh, that this is a sequel, a rightful sequel to Terminator 2. Like, throw out Terminator 3, 4, 5, we're going to pick up pretty much from Terminator 2. And for that reason, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger back. Again, he's more of a good Terminator. You have Linda Hamilton back. And you have James Cameron, who directed the first two. You have him back in the mix. He didn't direct, but he produced. Uh, you have him back in the mix, sort of overseeing a lot of this project. So, now, in this sixth installment, what they do here is reassemble key and classic plot points from Terminator 1 and 2 that are very familiar to fans of the original two films. Uh, some people might say they're too familiar, but suffice it to say uh, they don't deviate too far from the farm. They pretty much stay on track with those key plot points that there's a future filled with malicious machines and artificial intelligence and they're capable of developing Terminators and they're so uh, concerned about the resistance that they send people back in time to kill you know, future resistance leaders essentially. Now, as someone who has seen all the, all the films myself, seen them in the theaters myself, and heavily invested in the franchise and all the characters, I'm going to say I enjoyed the film. I liked it. Now, to be fair, it felt very similar to Terminator 2 in sort of the tone and the vibe and the plots and everything and the chase scenes. It felt very similar to Terminator 2, I'm not going to lie, but I'm totally fine with that. I mean, I, I like Terminator 2. That's hands down. No one disputes that that's the best film in the series. So why not have a film that's very similar to that? So a lot of people are going to say, oh, but well, this is totally derivative of Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. Why are we going to watch a rehash of these same old plot points, etc., 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 blah, blah, blah. Listen, with the exception of film critics and movie geeks like us, your typical moviegoer in 2019 which is in that 15 to 25 year old age range have not seen those movies let's just let's just get that out the way right off the bat those movies the first ones in 1984 the second ones in 1991 they have not seen those movies so this is all fresh material to the current movie going audience let's just get that out the way so stop with the, oh, it's so derivative, it's so similar, blah, blah, blah. Look, stop with that. All right, so what they do here is that they, uh, as I said, reassemble a lot of familiar plot points. I have no problem with that. I like that. I, I like those plot points. Uh, they reassemble all these different plot points in sort of a, a, a different kind of way, in a logical way that reunites Sarah Connor with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And basically, they decide they're going to basically retire the John Connor saga, if you will. Now, I have perfectly no problem with that. I kind of feel that they took the John Connor saga as far as they could. I know a lot of people have a problem with that. I particularly don't have a problem with that. As I said, I kind of feel they've taken that character as far as they needed to. Now, you could say, oh, but there's so much more they can do with John Connor. Look, I'm sort of done with John Connor. I have no problem with them bringing up somebody new. Daniel Ramos. That's fine with me. A new young person with her own story, etc., etc. You know, moving forward, I have no problem with a newcomer and giving her her own little journey and all that kind of stuff. All right, so let me talk about a few of the things I liked about the film. Uh, number one, I love the opening sequence. I thought that was like stunning, that was like mesmerizing, seeing all them people like de-aged and everything, very well done. Now, if you are a fan of those original two films, you were probably like blown away by that whole 
seen. If you were a newcomer, didn't see those original films, it probably seemed kind of interesting, but you know, nothing special. But if you are invested in those first two films, I'm sure you would be blown away by seeing them people de-aged back to, you know, the 1980s and 90s. That was like fantastic seeing that. So I love that whole that whole scene. And then secondly, yeah, I do like that they revisited a lot of these familiar plot points of, you know, the fact that they fall out from the sky, that they take the clothes of the people watching them and everything, that the guy was walking around asking, have you seen Daniel Ramos? Just like the Terminator was asking, have you seen Sarah Connor? You know, all that type of stuff. Again, none of that means anything to anybody who's not familiar with one and two. At any rate, that's fine with me. Now, frankly, the newest Terminator, this new advanced Terminator, the Rev-9, I think they're calling him, very similar to the T-1000 who had the molten abilities and shape-shifting abilities. Very similar, not going to lie. Now, to be fair, I kind of like that molten metal transformation process more than I like kind of this black tarry transformation. Not going to lie, but I can overlook that. Now, they did kind of spice this guy up with the ability to split apart. And I thought that was kind of cool how they did that. Now, now I will say that I would have liked that the two versions of the guy had a little dynamic between themselves. You know, that one would have one kind of personality and the other would have like a slightly different personality. And they kind of played on that a little bit. But they didn't do that. They were basically of the same mindset. Okay, that's all right with me. Now, I did like when Arnold Schwarzenegger was fighting the, the new Terminator. Probably would have liked to have seen a little more of that. But then again, there was a lot of fighting. But if you grew up with Terminator 1 and Terminator 2, you're used to seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, doing a lot of more dramatic fighting one-on-one. -on -one. Here, they set this up more as an ensemble fighting team where it's kind of four on one so to speak I did like the Grace character I did like the Danielle Ramos character now moving forward and I've done some reading on this this was supposed to be the first installment of a planned trilogy of films in other words they had an outline for three films and the future of the second and third installment was basically going to hinge on the success or failure of this first installment so to speak and based on the reception of the movie and the box office from the opening weekend it doesn't look like they're going to continue with this trilogy and revisit these characters but I certainly wouldn't rule out that the Terminator franchise is not going to come back in some type of form down the road I just can't see this as being the end of the Terminator franchise altogether but we will see so that's it for today guys thanks for watching and I will see you next time bye bye